Our world is full of riddles that no one can answer. Among them, there are many of those that, due to the development of technology, humanity is simply not able to unravel. But at the same time, there are those who are created by people themselves and who are often perplexed. And once you find the truth, it can shock you. And by the way, it is just such a mystery. The story happened with the hero of our video, a man named Alex Cooper, at who seemed to have everything. But in his old age, his life was destroyed, as the past overtook him. Well, we will fast forward to 1987. Alex Cooper is a man who, at the age of 65, has already achieved a lot. Alex spent his entire childhood in an orphanage, but this fact did not prevent him from living his life with dignity and becoming a respected person in Cranbourne, British Columbia, Canada. During these years, he had a beloved wife, five adult children, and eight grandchildren. All his life, he tried to prove the whole world that he deserves the best. And by the way, it succeeded. He had a large home, a loving family, and loyal friends. Not many can boast of this. But in an instant, all was gone. Alex has been running a successful cleaning business for over 20 years, and in 1986, he decided to do something new for himself. He bought a small truck, and at the same time became involved in the delivery of groceries. The work was not difficult, and the income allowed not only to feed the family, but even to save money for vacation. Years passed, and it was time for Alex Cooper to retire. The beloved wife was looking forward to the moment when they finally had free time, as they say, to live for themselves. But then, no one could even imagine what awaited them ahead. On April 4th, 1987, Alex's adult daughter, Lila, and her husband go to the neighboring city for shopping. But before reaching the supermarket near the bridge, they see Alex's parked car on the side of the road. The car stood with the engine muffled and was closed. All this indicated only one thing. Its owner was somewhere nearby. When we got closer to the car, we saw that dad was not there. I then thought that he was just fishing and went down to the riverbank. But to our surprise, he was not there either, my daughter recalled. The girl began to worry, because it seemed a little strange, and so she called her mother Margaret to find out what was happening, and what she heard soon made her nervous. Margaret replied that Alex did not return from work yesterday, and she herself does not understand where he might be. All night, she could not find a place for herself and called her friends, but none of them saw Alex and did not know his whereabouts. Hearing about this, Lila got to the city and contacted several hospitals, hopefully, but he did not register with any of them. The family had no choice but to call the police and report the disappearance of their father and husband. Already half an hour later, the police arrived at the location of the car and without thinking twice, got down to business. After examining the man's car, it turned out that it was in good working order. In the back seat lay Alex's jacket and his fishing gear, all of which indicated that Alex had never gone fishing for a small town, it was a real shock, and on the same day, an operational search for the missing man began. After interviewing his social circle, no one could imagine where he could go. Realizing that it was necessary to act promptly in hot pursuit, the police threw all their forces into the nearest crowded places, such as cafes and restaurants, and soon the investigator was lucky. They managed to find witnesses who clearly indicated that they saw Alex on the day of his disappearance in a small restaurant that was located less than a mile from where his car was found. And a little later, the police had the first guess. Having learned from Margaret the very strange habits of her husband to always carry a large amount of money with him, as well as learning that he never hid it in his wallet, the first thing that occurred to the investigation was that Alex was attacked for the purpose of robbery. And by the way, at first glance, everything seemed to fit. Perhaps someone just accidentally saw a wad of banknotes when Alex was paying at a restaurant and decided to rob him. But at the same time, Alex Cooper's daughter suggested that there was no fishing rod on the riverbank. Perhaps he went down to look at the current without taking a fishing rod with him and later slipped or simply lost consciousness, after which he fell into the river and drowned. And since the currents of the river are very strong, the body could be carried away several kilometers from this place. But these were only assumptions and there was no real evidence. The next day, the police submitted information to the newspaper about the disappearance of Alex Cooper in the hope of obtaining at least some additional information and thereby connecting the public and later this bore fruit. 
Soon, calls began to come from caring drivers who, it seemed to them, saw a similar man on the road that day near Cranberg, and, according to them, he was catching a ride. It seemed even stranger than the disappearance itself, because no one could believe that Alex's loving husband, father, and grandfather could just give up everything in an instant and disappear. But at that same time, the authorities suggested that Alex might have left voluntarily. As for the family members, they all agreed that it was not him. They could not accept the option that Alex faked his disappearance because the man could not act so irresponsibly with them and just leave without saying anything. And there were no prerequisites either. He was very successful and happy. He was soon to retire and indeed his whole life was a success. He definitely did not have anything to run away, but be that as it may and the measures taken, the interviewed relatives and friends, the help of the media, and so on did not lead to anything. A whole year has passed since the disappearance of my beloved husband. Although the searches continued, but they did not give any result. In 1988, I had to officially declare him dead, said Margaret sadly. So one ordinary day, a woman lost all meaning of her life and a loved one. And no one in the whole world can answer the question, where did Alex go? And what happened to him that day? But then bureaucratic delays followed, and as Margaret herself recalled, I could not even imagine what the truth would soon be revealed. I started going through the documents because it was necessary to provide Alex's birth certificate, but to my surprise, I could not find it anywhere. I had to go to the Archives of Canada to restore it, but what I learned shocked me. As it turned out in the archives, Margaret said that a birth certificate in the name of Alex Cooper in his hometown had never been issued. But that was not all. The fact is that for the first time information about a person with such a name appeared only in 1952. And this was exactly the year when Margaret and Alex got married. And it turned out that until that time, her husband simply did not exist. At least according to the documents. But how can this be? This fact did not fit into the minds of not only relatives, but also policemen and even journalists who were also involved in the case. Everyone was interested in one question. Who, in fact, then was this pleasant and respectable family man who, by his disappearance, left behind many mysteries? I told our children about everything and they were also shocked. It turns out a man with whom I lived for 34 years and whom, it seemed to us, we knew everything so well hid a lot, Margaret told reporters. But even this did not answer the question of where Alex had gone and what happened that day. Over the next four years, the Cooper family did not live, but one might say existed in a state of constant uncertainty, and most likely it would have remained so, and this mystery would not have been solved to this day. But on May 27, 1991, five whole years after the mysterious disappearance of a man, the necessary information finally appeared. But what new facts were revealed in the Alex Cooper case? And is he even alive? In order to give answers to these questions, you and I will be transported at a distance of three and a half thousand kilometers from Cranberg to where the Toronto police on May 27, 1991, received a statement about the disappearance of a certain David Cooper. The man lived alone, and an attentive neighbor noticed that David had not appeared for several days, after which he called the police. The patrol, who arrived to the call, with the help of the landlord who leased the square meters to David, opened the apartment and began to inspect it. On the table was a photograph of the missing David, which the police took with them later to the police station in order to file him on the wanted list. And I think, as many have already understood, an incredible surprise awaited everyone later. Imagine the surprise of the Toronto police when they found a similar man in the base, who was wanted several years ago in another part of the mainland. In this photo, David was standing with a newborn baby in his arms and showing his photo to Margaret, she, with tears in her eyes, confirmed that it was her husband, Alex, and in his arms, he was holding their grandson. The photo itself was taken in 1985, a year before his mysterious disappearance. And looking at the face of this happy man, it was difficult to imagine what made this man hide from the whole world. Now it has become clear to everyone that David Cooper is the very same Alex Cooper who disappeared without a trace five years ago under strange circumstances. But there are still no answers to the questions of what happened then, because both Alex and David were listed as missing. But as it turned out, the most interesting was still ahead of everyone. Two days later, on May 29, 1991, David, 
aka Alex, calmly and unaware of anything, returns to Toronto. And entering his apartment, he saw that someone was in charge. Then he turned to a neighbor and explained that he was just a little late on a business trip. But upon learning that the police were in his apartment, the man became very nervous. After which he hurriedly grabbed his things even before the arrival of the law enforcement officers. Probably, our hero would have continued to run all over the country if in October of the same year, the story of Alex was not shown on television in Canada, or David Cooper, whose identity was never established. Fortunately, the telecast was very popular at the time, and a viewer from Hamilton soon informed the authorities that the disappeared man now lives in their town, even on its street. Now, everyone needed to find out why Alex, or David Cooper, constantly moves from place to place, and most importantly, what secret he was hiding. And finally, after many years and countless attempts to find the missing Alex, on January 10th, 1992, the police finally managed to catch the fugitive. The man had no choice but to give his real name and reveal secrets that haunted neither his family nor the police. So, who exactly was Alex Cooper? My real name is Albin Arsenault. Back in 1948, when I was only 26 years old, I was an ordinary bank employee. But by coincidence, I was falsely accused of robbing one of the Union Pacific Railroad offices where I worked then. I was not going to be responsible for what I didn't do, but nobody wanted to listen to me, so I just ran away. In 1952, Albin married Margaret under an assumed name, and this was the beginning of his new life. He lived long and happy, 35 years with his beloved wife and children. But closer to his retirement, the past overtook him. The man did not want to talk about how he still managed to get fake documents in the name of Alex Cooper. But the reason for his flight from the family struck even more than his whole story. As the man said, For many years, I hid my real identity. But when it was time for me to retire and it was necessary to provide a birth certificate, I realized that I would be revealed. Even if I didn't apply, Sooner or later, all of you wondered why I don't do this. I could not bring myself to admit to my family that I had been deceiving them for more than 30 years. And then I decided that I had better disappear, said Alex. But another shock awaited the man. If he had known then that the real robbers of the Union Pacific Railroad office had long been caught and punished half a century ago, then he would not have had to live someone else's life. But be that as it may, this story is destined to have a happy ending. After being interrogated in Toronto, the man returned to British Columbia to his family. His wife and children, of course, forgave Alex for his actions and started life from scratch. But most importantly, now they knew that he had nothing to hide and knew the whole truth about his father and husband. The last years of the family's life were calm because now they were together. Margaret passed away in 1996 and Alex Cooper left our world in 2007. In general, here is such a story. Friends, and what do you think about all you heard? How would you act in the place of a man and his family? Be sure to write your opinion in the comments. But for today, perhaps that's all. Rate the video if you like it, and see you soon. Bye.